Welcome back to another episode of Midwest Outdoors. Well, today our plan was to come out here and pop a bunch of holes and catch a bunch of bluegills, but it's like 20 mile an hour wind. Yeah, it's pretty windy. <laughs> it's, and it's not exactly that warm out either. So the game plan changed. We're gonna fish it hub style. We're gonna get the otter uh, hub set up, get some heat in them, catch some fish. Catch some fish, man. <laughs> you know, not all hubs are created equal. It used to be that many of the real basic hubs, literally all they had was a little bit of skirt right here to pile up some snow, bank it, make it complete for a windy setup. But this ice lock anchor system is the real deal. Let me show you how it works. All you do is get your ice anchor in. So after your ice anchor is secure, literally all you have to do is take and tighten down this ice lock strap. And what that means is that the corner of your house can't come up in the wind very easily, but you still have all of this skirt material for which to bank and pile snow on. So it's a double whammy of keeping it windproof, but also keeping it warm. One of my favorite features on the otters, and I set them up hundreds of times throughout the year, little things that make my life easier, propane hose flap. Boom, connect to the tank, I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about unbanking the shelter after, or if you forgot to hook up a, a heater or something like that. Otter put a lot of ingenuity into these shelters. The nice thing about the newly redesigned Otter XTH hubs is they have all kinds of storage uh, built for fishermen, people that are trying to just get things off the floor, get them out of your way. We've got rod storage, we've got big pouches, we've got overhead storage. There's just a lot of ways in which this is made for more creature comforts and made it fit our fishing better. There we go. Ooh, you hear that drag clicking? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pile of weeds. No, I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, that's not weeds, bro. That's not weeds. That is another palm-sized, <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous gill. That one's got a little tail funk on him there. You see that? He must have got bit by a pike or something. But it's a simple approach. We found... Oh, he barely nipped that. We found green weeds, and we're using the VMC fly jig because whenever you're in weeds, it's buggy. It's my go-to lure when we're in weeds and you're catching big bluegills like this. But these are the type we like to put back, so I'm gonna get this guy back in the water. Oh yeah. Wasn't sure, wasn't sure that <laughs> fish had it. Oh yeah, it had it. What are you? That rod's bent, man. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Ooh, oh, bright, bright hen. Look at that. Not like the uh, blues that your fish had. This is a hen, we call it a, a hen. It's a female bluegill. See your ear tabs, just a touch shorter. Uh, some of the ones Brad's been catching, big, bright blue, red breasted, got the spawning colors on already. But uh, I'll tell you, it's amazing, Brad, how these fish relate to weed beds. It's just a jungle down there, but there's so much life in them. Oh, bugs, you name it. Look at that guy. Girl. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, she gets a pass. Gonzo. I love seeing those big panfish go back. Phenomenal. You know, and it's interesting from a conservation perspective, uh, you know, we like to see fish in that eight, nine inch range go back. Uh, definitely the tens. That's a female. If you're gonna have some fish to eat, a female is a great fish to eat because those big bruiser males are the ones that protect the spawning nests in the spring. So that's of the utmost importance to get those big, bright blue red breasted males back into the lake. Oh, oh, oh. And a part of the reason that we're getting these gills today, oh, that is another nice one. <laughs> part of the reason we're getting these nice gills today is the fact that we are in a hub house. And you may say, why are you, why are you getting more fish when you're, when you're in a shelter? And the, and the reason is, is when you're fishing outside and you have a day like today where your holes are literally freezing up every 30 seconds to a minute, you get false bites. When you get a little ice on your line, and you pull it up and your, your spring bobber will go. Fishing in a house eliminates that. And for me and my customers, it ends up catching us it, it, from taking a 20 fish day and turning it into a 40 fish day, just being able to detect those subtle bites. You know, I think the coolest thing about any kind of bluegill bite, but especially this one, it just reminds me of small, shallow lakes uh, or ponds of my youth, I mean, my grandpa taught me how to fish. We fished in weed beds, dingy, dark bottom lakes, just like this. And uh, 
uh, an active bluegill bite brings out the kid in me. I, I don't know about you, Brad. But... It, 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 bluegills are something that, it was the first fish I ever caught and I hope it's my last. You know, I, I'm passionate about walleyes, I love walleyes, but to be able to come out still and catch big, big bluegills that they're still available in Minnesota, uh, that people are getting, are getting more conservation minded is incredible that we're preserving these fisheries <laughs> for generations to come. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, tanker. Another nice one. <laughs> yeah, to your point, Brad, uh, this can't ever quit. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure uh, put back fish like this. And, uh, you know, I really want my kids to grow up and enjoy this just like just like I did as a, as a young boy. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I don't know, man, this might be uh, one of our last fish of the day. This is a good fish, but we got to probably get rolling, huh? Yep, sounds good. I think we're going to pack up the hub. We've had a great day catching bluegills. And for Joel Nelson, I'm Brad Hawthorne. You'll catch more from Midwest Outdoors coming right up.